how they work around their particular holy days. So it's no coincidence that they make all of their holidays in close proximity to the Bible's holy days because Satan promised that he would be like God. And there's something that happens around every holiday where there's a connection between the heavens and the people on earth. So Satan is trying to do everything he can to steal all that reverence should be, that should be for the Almighty. You notice the last time I had a lesson like this, it was near the turning of seasons. From what? You got it. From the fall into winter. Right? Remember that lesson I did? And it was right after what? Halloween. So they like to do this. They like to keep their holy days, their satanic holy days in close proximity because they understand that there's a vibration during that time. Windows are opened up. Gates are opened up between the heavens and earth. That's calling us into righteousness, into the, the, in, in the, into the true direction of our God. And if they can close that door, it'll be the God of this earth directing us instead of ours. So now... We're here at a time in which the whole earth should recognize as what the feast of dedication. And guess what? Satan is trying to steal that reverence through Thanksgiving. They would rather us give a thanks. Hold on. They would rather for us to give thanks on a day that they actually created on a day that gives reverence to their conquering the earth instead of us giving thanks in what? A temple, a people being what? Dedicated back to the Almighty. So today what we're going to do is we're going to show you. We're going to show you that specific point in which God's people, the children of Israel in the Bible began to be more what? disconnected from the heavens to a degree where we would reverence these holy days in the earth opposed to dedicating our lives into understanding what the true holy days and how to connect with the almighty. What is the feast of dedication? How does that apply now that Christ has come into the earth? Well, we're going to deal with that today, but before we deal with that, let's deal with this first. Elder lawyer, let's get 1 Corinthians 10 and 20 out of your Bible. 1 Corinthians in the New Testament 10 and 20. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. They sacrifice to what? They sacrifice to devils. They sacrificed to devils. So sacrifice, brothers and sisters, you don't realize is a key component for all holy days. You notice all holy days come with feasting. Well, that's not by coincidence. An animal had to die as a sacrifice so that that holy convocation could be what? Festive. So you think it's just a get together. No, it's a sacrifice to a God. And that's what they're hiding in America and the Western world. What they're hiding is when an animal is sacrificed and it's celebrated and festive, that there's a, a spiritual connection to it. And that's why it endears our people at every time during a certain time of year to all come together, if not any time of year or any time of the season, but for those specific days. It's spiritual. But this is what the disciples were pointing out. Just because there's a get together doesn't, need, doesn't mean it's a dedication or a festivity according to our God, the God of the Bible, Christ and those who believe in him. So you must be able to discern the difference like the disciples were able to. He says the things what? Which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. Now, what is a Gentile? Some might ask, and I'm going to break this down simple. 
ABC because we know we have new people who come to the, this knowledge and come to this page all the time who may not, who, that, that, that word may be foreign to you, okay? It's not, it's not a degrading word, okay? It's not to demean anyone. Gentile only means, according to the Bible, people or races outside of the children of Israel. Okay, so when it says Gentiles, it's talking about non-Israelites. They're not from the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So now Paul is making this distinction that the things they sacrifice when they kill their animals for festivities, they are to who? They're, they're doing it to who? They sacrifice to devils. They sacrifice to devils. Okay, and that's the that's the secret that they're not, that, that's what's being hid behind closed doors. The spirits that the secret societies and those that are controlling things, the spirits they truly sacrifice to. They're the demons. And they set it up and tie it up and, and make it seem as a good thing so that the majority of people would just accept it. Not realizing, in most cases, child sacrifices is attached to every high holy day of the Gentiles. So while you're dealing with festivities for your children and bringing people together, giving gifts, eating, drinking, well, at the end of that, all of that spirit goes right to Satan to a degree where one of their priests at 12 midnight, that same night, kills an innocent child. Okay, under Moloch sacrifice. Now, because you didn't do it, you might think, well, I have nothing to do with some, uh, somebody else's dying. But you have to realize how it works under the occult. They're, they're, taking, they're taking all of that energy that comes with what? The whole earth being silenced like a Sabbath. And all that love and joy, all that goes, all that energy goes into the occult that's used, that makes people really a part of their high ceremony. Why? Because they're celebrating a sacrifice into their gods opposed to the God of Israel. It's a celebration for them that they were able to do what their Lord Lucifer said he would do, be like God, and that we would sacrifice on his holy days opposed to the holy days in the Bible. And this is why Paul is breaking this down, that the things that the Gentiles sacrifice, and I know Christmas feel good, feels good. I know that I know that Thanksgiving feels good. But folks, it's all deception. It's all deception. Now the devil is such, he's such a liar that instead of him coming out forth with his priests and his politicians and saying, listen, we're sacrificing the devils, he would, he would want what? He would want us to believe that God intends for us to deal with these days. That's how wicked and evil and deceitful he is. So that we can be a part of their ceremony, a part of their ritual. It's no, it's no coincidence that here it is, Thanksgiving, everyone is all together, Black Friday, Black Friday. What's that, according to the Bible? That's Dark Sabbath. Dark Sabbath is a satanic, a satanic time that opened up portals to hell. Go out and shop, get ready for Christmas. And then you think it's a coincidence that on the same day that there was uh, Black Friday, that all of a sudden, right on time, a new variant. It's all intertwined in their celebrations and holidays, folks, of getting people initiated or part of their nonsense. So the first part of separating yourself is understanding what's really behind the holy days they're controlling the people with. Holidays in this system is a form of control over the minds and populations of the people. Because this is the time where they can get the most eyeballs and ears. You're not dealing with anything else but looking at TV. All Everything they're doing is for programming. And this is why the Bible says, and then the most highs and the angels are totally in order on their holy days like we're doing right now. And the whole earth isn't doing nothing for the Feast of Dedication. I need y'all to check that out. There's no celebration. There's no festivals. There's nothing going on when, when the sun go down tonight and the whole heavens, including the angels, are dealing with the feast of dedications tonight. 
But Satan tried to steal all that love through thanksgiving. The things with the Gentiles sacrificed, they sacrificed to who? To devils. To devils. And not to God. It has nothing to do with God. And it doesn't matter whether or not you sat around the table and said you had so many things to be thankful for. It doesn't matter if you're holding hands and, 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 and thinking that, well, God, thank you for this cranberry sauce. Thank you for this turkey. Now, thank you for another time through COVID for us making it through, not knowing whether or not we'll be able to have another dinner. The Bible tells us that when we spread our hands to pray, that the Most High will turn his back on us and that even our prayer will be an abomination. Now, you think I'm making that up? Let's get that in the book of Isaiah real quick. Let's go to Isaiah, the first chapter, folks. We're going all the way into this today. Where was the point where we lost this connection? And we're going to show you that time in history. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 1 and 22. Let's read that. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 22. Thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water. I got you. You got verse, it? Verse uh, 12. Verse 12, yeah. Uh, when ye come to appear before me, who have required this at your hand. The Bible says, when you come before me, who required this at thine hand? This is Isaiah 1 and 22. He's speaking to the Israelites who knew the high holy days. Holiday is synonymous with what the Bible calls holy day. I know that y'all don't know this, but I and Y is synonymous. So when you're celebrating a holiday in the Western world, you're celebrating a day to Satan. And Satan purposely put all his holy days in close proximity to the Bibles, to God's holy days on purpose, so that he can steal the, all the energy and all the prayer and reverence from the God who made us. This is why they don't like Israelites and those who are teaching the Bible. See? Every time we convert and bring people to the knowledge of the truth, that's pulling one more brick out of the building called Babylon. This is why they don't like it. Because you must fall for their delusion and blindly follow a holy day, not realizing the God of it. <laughs> See, right? In order for this system to continue, it's what? Deception over the earth. People must become willing participants of it. And what we do is say, well, listen, you can do whatever you want, but this is what, God, don't try to put God into it. Don't try to say that God wants you to do this. The most high God, the God of the Bible, the God in heaven didn't give you any of these holy days. That's the whole thing. Be honest. Say, listen, I'm doing it, but I'm doing it because my family, for my children, because I'm selfish, because I really don't want to serve the living God. Don't try to bring God into it. And this is what he's telling, showing in the, in the book of Isaiah. And it's okay. You can have a party if you want. But just say you're having a party. Don't try to bring God into it because why? You should not be celebrating. None of us should be celebrating any holy days that the Bible doesn't refer us to. Christ was not born on December the 25th. I, I got empirical, empirical tr proof beyond any shadow of a doubt of the mystery religion of Mithraism, which, which was the real religion of the Romans while Christ was even, while Christ was walking the earth. Okay. December the 25th was the birth of Mithras. Before that, it was what? Talmuz or Nimrod incarnate in ancient Babylon. Read it again. Jumping to verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? So what purpose is your sacrifices? Killing animals, ham, turkey, and all that. What good is that to him? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and of fat fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. So he's not delighting in our sacrifice if he didn't establish the sacrifice, which is the festivity. Read. When he come to appear before me. When you come to appear before him. Who have required this at your hand to tread my courts? Where in the Bible did it tell you to do this? Where in the Bible did it tell you to celebrate the destruction of the North American Indians and make it a festive, a festivity? 
where the turkey represents the beheaded North American Indians who were destroyed. And, and the cranberry sauce represents the blood that was shed to take, to take over people's territory. Where was that required by the Almighty? To celebrate the conquest over God's people. Read. 13. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. Read. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I can 